Well, good morning. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning and allowing the teens to share with you their joy and experience from the National Gathering. I understand it's probably a little different than what we're used to, but that's okay. One, one, year out of every, one day out of every three years is okay. All I can say is, wow, what an absolutely amazing blessing it was to be able to co-lead this group to Houston. I know I can speak for Tara when I say I was blown away by the teenagers on this trip. Their compassion, flexibility, kind-heartedness, respect, and patience were off the charts. It was awesome to see how God worked through and, through and used each one of, this, of them on this trip. I was super excited for this trip because, as one of our speakers said, oftentimes our faith can grow so much deeper when we're pulled out of our comfort zones and put into situations where we have to trust God and the people of God. And let me tell you, this week was full of what I call God things. Those unexplainable things that happen to us to make us even more confident of God's presence around us. From the speakers to the worship, to the travel, to the weather, to the finances. God's presence was truly felt. We as a group thank you for your prayers, financial support, and encouragement that you have gave us throughout the past three years. So today, Tara and I wanted to give you a brief recap of the experiences we had and the speakers we heard. And we heard a lot of speakers. We're not going to break down every one. But we wanted to let you know of the ones that really had a profound impact on the teens. Every night, we had what we call the final 15. And this was a 15 minutes to recap the day, talk about the logistics of the next day, pray, and talk about our highs and lows. At the end of this time, we gave each teen an index card to write down the most impactful things they had heard or did that day. We did these anonymously so that we could use them during Sunday worship and told them we would be sharing some of their thoughts. So let's start with Wednesday. Travel to and from Houston could not have gone better. We arrived a little late on Wednesday night to the gathering, and with a full house of 30,000 people already worshiping, we had an usher tell us, after losing two of our guys for a few minutes. <laughs> we had an usher tell us that there was, go ahead and try section 100, there might be a few seats. We walked into an immense space and there were 10 seats in a row with two open behind them directly above for Tara and I. And when I say this was a God thing, this was a God thing. Considering the place was packed to the rafters and most areas only had about one or two spots open. To have our group together, especially on that first night, was a huge answer to prayer for me, especially when I had to get everyone out of the building and not lose anyone. Uh, finally, when I settled into my seat, I looked up and my breath was literally taken away. 30,000 people, mostly teenagers, were in this arena. I had pictured it in my mind, but until you see it, wow. The Holy Spirit was truly in that place, and hearing this group singing worship songs to their God loudly and unashamedly was one of the highlights of my 36 years. The ELCA did not shy away from tough topics that teenagers often face. The speaker's topics included eating disorders, bullying, self-harm, drug and alcohol abuse, sexual assault, suicide, transgender, transgender issues, LGBTQ issues, loneliness, and more. As leaders, we were given hotlines and immediate access to teams of chaplains if we needed them. I appreciated that the ELCA took a stand and didn't sugarcoat what can be a very difficult time for many people. At the end of all of this, the resounding theme was, there is grace for that, and Jesus changes everything. The speakers left us with the knowledge of hope that is found in Christ Jesus. Each day had a theme, and Wednesdays was, God's call changes everything. Unfortunately, arriving late, we did miss several of the speakers. However, we did hear a man named Brian Stevenson. And Brian shared with us how he was called, how God called him to work on death row as a civil rights lawyer, and how his work with the Equal Justice Initiative is a call from God. He encouraged the youth to consider how their vocations intersect with our calling as Christians to pursue compassion, justice, and reconciliation. Stevenson encouraged Lutherans to speak out and name injustice. He said, when we see injustice, it's necessary that people of faith speak their truth. We're going to have to say things when it would be easier to be quiet. He spoke of tragic injustice facing young children who get tried as adults and caught up in the prison system. We ended the day finding our bus along with 30,000 other people, which was interesting to say the least. 
We had our final 15 and got tucked in for the night. I virtually tucked the children in via text message because I have to tuck kids in at night. Um, And then we got ready for another exciting day. Tara will take it through Thursday. Maybe. Okay, so Thursday was our interactive learning day. So we have a picture of a guy, our guys with their drawing of Jesus that they did. Um, If you can't see, he's wearing Nike tennis shoes, so uh, that was great. Um, Interactive Learning Day is um, a big building. um, I don't even remember how big. 700,000 square feet um, filled with activities and booths that the kids could go to. There were um, different topics like reflecting, move, and different things like that. Um, So there was games. There was activities like this. There was zip lining, mini golf all kinds of things, but then there was actual booths, too, that covered um, human trafficking and other things like that. So we spent the whole day there, and I'm pretty sure our kids had a blast the whole time. (laughs) Um, Me and Katie overpaid for lunch, but, you know, that's okay. Um, In the evening, Thursday, we actually got lucky to sit in our same seats, the same section as we did the the night before, Um, for actually every single night, which is really incredible because there was 31,000 people. So (laughs) Um, so a couple of our speakers, um, first of all, um, Rachel Kurtz um, was the singer that night as as well as the house band. Um, And then Caroline Meeker, um, she suffered from an eating disorder um, that she started at the age of nine when she was called fat. So she talked about her experiences and how she's overcome that. Um, Reverend Aaron Fuller talked about struggles. He's a military chaplain and things that we go through that are hard in life and how to overcome that. Um, Marlon was great. He just talked about um, doing what you're, um, just doing what you do, um, doing what you love. God's love is greater than anything else um, in the world. He brought his daughter out, which everybody was, Amazed. Uh, <laughs> she was adorable. Um, and then the deacon went through the survey, or um, each day there was a lesson, like a Bible lesson, um, based off of what we read. So the story that we read for our gospel, that was the lesson for that day. Um, so she kind of read it, went through it with us, um, and talked about being comfortable in your own skin. Um, and then the youth, um, I wanted to share a couple of the youth comments about Thursday night. Um, one of them said, God provides us with the right people and tools to get through tough times. Um, God is everywhere, and everyone going, is going through horrible struggles in their own way, and that everyone has a mark to make. So those were three important points that the kids really got from the day. So Friday's theme was God's grace changes everything. And Friday was sin a day for our group. And because it didn't start till around 1130, we took some downtime in the morning and hit the pool. Sin a day took place right in the ballroom at our hotel. And we met and worshiped with, I was going to count all those people, but we tried last night. It didn't work. I I don't know. You can see a lot of people. Those are all people from the Mitten Synod. Um, we, the worship music was led by teens from the Synod, and Bishop Satterley was there to preside. We broke down the story of the Ethiopian eunuch and talked about how we can be like Philip in the story and share faith with others. Following Synod Day, we took an Uber, which, let me tell you, is the most awesome way to get around a city. I especially loved talking to the Uber drivers and getting to hear their stories of their lives in Houston, how the flooding affected them, etc., as the week went on, the Uber drivers began, became more and more aware of the huge group of teenagers that had infiltrated their city, and they were very appreciative of the work we were doing. Anyway, we took the Uber to Chacho's Mexican restaurant and enjoyed some time to get away from the big crowds and relax and have a meal together. Our day ended with another amazing mass gathering at NRG. Will Starkweather, an ELCA pastor, was the speaker who our teen said was one of the most impactful at the entire gathering. He shared his experience with self-harm during his teenage and young adult years. In college, when he revealed his secret to his pastor, his pastor shared with him four words, you're going to hell. Starkweather left the church, dropped out of school, and fell into a deep depression, and he continued to self-harm. 
Eventually, he began to rebuild his life. He found a new church and divulged his secret to his pastor again, who had four more words. There's grace for that. He said, you all, those words changed my life. Starkweather told all who were gathered, we are all recovering from something, and there's grace for that. After concluding a powerful testimony to a standing ovation, Starkweather said from his talk, he wanted people to take home with them that there's no such thing as too broken, and our broken places are where God brings out beauty. Some of the comments from our specific group about this talk were, quote, Will's entire speech and statements moved me very deeply. Quote, Will's story really shows how you can turn pain into strength. Quote, there's grace for that really got me. It was an awesome message that had a ton of feeling behind it. Quote, God's grace is not just about the forgiveness of sins, but the overwhelming love he has for us. And quote, I appreciate how open the speakers were about their past and their troubles. Between speakers, we had an opportunity to worship through music, and not just music that we might be familiar with from normal Sunday services, but varieties of music from rap to rock to poetic, instrumental, and etc. And we also had the opportunity to use dance as an expression of our praise to God. Children of God worship differently. Some may sit, some may stand, some may clap, some may raise their hands, some may dance. And the variety of the variety and freedom to worship unashamedly to our Savior was very powerful. Nadia Boltz Weber, an ELCA pastor and best selling author, gave the final talk of the evening. She told youth that when she was a teen, she struggled with an autoimmune disease that made her eyes bulge out of her head. She said, My daily reality at your age was name calling and social isolation. She proclaimed to the youth, If your life totally sucks right now, if you struggle with having friends or feeling like an outsider, just know that your current reality is not your ultimate reality. There's a word for when our tears turn to joy, and there's a word for when our pain is a home for those who also hurt, she said. And that, my friends, is is grace. She said she wishes someone had told her 15-year-old self what grace was. That's why Boltz Weber writes and preaches so honestly about her life experiences because the jagged edges of our humanity are what connect us to God and to each other. One of our students wrote that she always wants to remember the way that Nadia talked about how we need to talk and be open about not just the good things, but the bad things as well. We concluded another night by joining a mass of 30,000 people trying to get to our bus again. We followed the... Terry, got to show them. So we bought this foam finger, and I held, held this up in front of the line, and we all hang loose to our bus. <laughs> all right, on to Saturday. So Saturday was our service learning day. So this was a crazy day for us. We had to wake up at 6 a.m. What? <laughs> I know. Our kids were tired. Um, but they were great this whole day. Um, we ended up going to Fifth Ward, um, which is a part in Houston, um, and we were divided up into smaller groups, and we went to spread mulch in the medians in the road. Um, we did that for three, four hours until it was done, basically. Um, if we weren't there, the, uh, five people would have done it themselves, and we had over 200 people, so that was amazing. Um, We had people driving by yelling out thank you, and we had people coming from their house to come show appreciation. Um, Me and Adele were in a group, and one of the guys who was helping actually overheated and needed to sit down, and a neighbor came running with ice and just helped us. So they were showing their appreciative by helping us, and we were helping them. So that was incredible. All of our kids loved it. Um, after that, that only lasted about half the day, um, but we were tired and sweaty enough. So <laughs> we went back to the Community Life Center, um, which was more games, fun. There was uh, Bible studies. Um, they had a dance party for us um, and just different things like that. Most of our kids um, sat down and relaxed, took a little break, but some kids went out, had fun, came back, needed Band-Aids, so we were prepared. <laughs> Um, but they all had a blast. We um, went through we a ton of band-aids. Yeah, we did go yeah. through a lot of um, Mass gathering. Um, we had a great 
great speakers on Saturday night. Um, Dr. Reverend Stephen Bowman, Bowen? I don't know. He was um, working, he was there um, at 9-11. He was at the site. Um, he had friends involved. Um, and he just kind of talked about how you have to have hope. And he had people coming to him. And he's like, I had no hope inside of me. But yet I had to give hope to all these people coming to me. So he talked about that. Um, Jamie and Rebecca, she is a transgendered girl. She came out when she was nine. She found out she's a pastor's kid. She was terrified of how the church was going to accept her. Um, she says the church has accepted her so well um, that she's a completely different person, that she's really who she is now, who she's meant to be, um, and that God doesn't make mistakes. God made you the way he made you. Um, Maria Rose, she um, started a company called Means. Um, Means is a company where they take food that is left over from businesses or different things, and they give it to pl uh, people in need. Um, she was talking about in the last... Sorry, I didn't switch my page earlier. Um, in the last three years, they have um, given food... Um, to people, and it's been 1.8 pounds of food that they have given out from this program. Um, it is in about 48 states right now, and they're trying to get it more. Um, and she also mentioned that 1.8 pounds of food have been given to people. <laughs> oh, million, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I thought I said that. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm excited, okay. Um, she also said that one in eight neighbors rely on something for food. So we have enough food to give out. We just don't have enough compassion, is what she said. Um, Carson McCuller, he just graduated high school, and he talked about he um, was in recovery. He did um, drugs. He used to be a drug dealer, um, and he had a really bad life. And, but he grew up in a church home with family and friends surrounding him, played sports, average kid, um, ended up um, getting to the lowest he could be. He could have died with his drugs. Um, and he said his family and friends had enough hope to save him, and God's hope brought him back. Um, and he said our favorite quote of the night, that he, doesn't, he still deals, but instead of dealing dope, he deals hope. Um, <laughs> so we loved that. Um, and then Joe Davis um, was a poet who spoke about um, hope in society and things going on nowadays. Um, and then we had our music, 10th Avenue North, who was amazing. Um, and then we went to our bus. Okay, so. and then we went to our bus again. <laughs> Sunday's theme was Jesus Changes Everything, and we woke up and headed by bus to NRG Stadium for the last time, and we met with 30,000 other students and leaders for that Sunday morning worship. The gospel, just like you heard here at Faith Lutheran, was the fifth chapter of Mark. Bishop Eaton focused on the hemorrhaging woman and those desperately needing the healing that only Jesus can bring. She stated that the powers of this world are good at separating people, the clean from the unclean, Bishop Eaton closed her sermon saying, here's the wonderful news. Where it looks impossible, remember most of all, most of all that Jesus has changed everything. So there was 30,000 people in the stadium and we all took communion. So how do you commune over 30,000 people? How long will it take? Well, it took a dedicated team of volunteers 22 minutes and 43 seconds to commune everyone in NRG Stadium. It was pretty, it, it was impressive. So following the service, we took an Uber, another Uber, and spent some time at the Galleria Mall, which is an amazing mall, and then headed back to the hotel for some more pool time. We finished in the evening with a nice Italian meal at a restaurant at our, near our hotel, and then we headed back to plan this Sunday service, which the kids picked the song. i got to quit calling you kids. Young adults picked, <laughs> picked the songs and, and uh, what they wanted to do, and really proud of them for doing that. And then Monday, we traveled home again. So Tara's going to share the totals uh, from the week. I think that's our next slide. 
So there was lots of things going on during the week. Um, for those that can't read it, I'll run through it real quick. They were doing hair donations for children with hair loss, and they had 437 um, sections or chunks of hair. I don't know what it's called. Um, <laughs> they had uh, 1,248 units of blood donated, um, 40,000 books for Blast Off for Books. So that was awesome. Thank you guys for your help in book donations. Um, they made 200 grace bags um, as part of their table participants. Table is a group for um, people with like disabilities. They come early, and it's part of the gathering. There's three sections of gathering, and that was one section. Um, Mile, 700 individuals attended Mile, which is the multicultural youth section of that. That was another group. Um, and then 260,000 plus raised for Global Farm Challenge. At the bottom, it says... There were 31,242 registered gathering participants. So that was the actual number in the stadium every night. Um, if you want to hit the next slide. Um, on Sunday's gathering, that is our total there. Um, the offerings will be divided between prison congregations of America, which was talked about by Brian Stevenson on the first night, um, Global New Starts, and then Gulf Coast Synod. So that is how much was raised by everybody. So for several months before this, we had that sponsorship board out front in the Narthex, and we just wanted to say a quick thank you to people who specifically uh, donated to those. We tried to take pictures around the city, but <laughs> found the pieces of paper were a little hard to read. So thank you to all those people listed on there. We definitely appreciate that. There might be a second. Is there a second slide, Adele? So there's more of us holding pictures. So Griffin sleeping in the airport. Yes. <laughs> so the young adults knew that you had given and really appreciate that. Okay, so now, thank you, Adele. Um, we are going to do a slideshow for you guys. Um, this is just to show you the fun pictures and videos that we got throughout the week that we really wanted to share with you real quick. Um, it gives you a taste of the gathering and what we were participating in. Um, just a quick announcement, too, about this before we go. The first song in it um, was actually sung by Jenny Owens on the first night, and she is blind, and she talked about her struggles with that. But um, she sang this song live for us, and I just liked it, so I put it in. Um. <laughs> Oh 